And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello there. All right, the Dahmer series, episode two. Um, two things really distinctly on this episode. First of all, the father must feel awful. I like when, that's probably what he was thinking in the police station because he's thinking back on everything. He was taking his kid around to pick up roadkill because he was he was trying to do a good thing, which is which is kind of heart wrenching because his son was off and he could never connect with his child. But when his child found like death fascinating, he decided to interact with his child by showing him like the intestines of animals and things that could really mess someone up. So unintentionally, he's he's putting ideas in this six year old's head. Oof. And it just, it just, cause I was thinking, you know what, if, if the father's going to be a part of it and the father's going to, it's going to be like an abusive father, but his father wasn't really abusive, maybe towards his wife, but he seemed to actually genuinely care about his kids more than his wife did who tried to commit suicide because she just didn't want to, she, she, a, attention. She obviously didn't care enough about her kids to stick around and he was working. So it was, it seemed like he was trying to connect with his child, which which is is gun gut wrenching because it's just like every father wants to connect with their children, especially sons. They want to be able to have that one on one to be able to ha find a common ground. And here he found it by reciting what his college professor had told him in his experiments on like frogs, beheading frogs, brain damage, things like that to a six year old. What he learned in college, he's teaching to a six year old. Crazy. And also, the fact that he basically had a get-out-of-jail-free card. The fact that he is homosexual and the fact that, well, when it came to race, especially at that point in time, it was very uncomfortable subject and it, it was easier for cops not to get involved. So he, he would just say, oh, gay stuff. And then the cops would get uncomfortable and want to clean themselves because they were afraid of getting AIDS. It, it's just insane how he was able to manipulate the situation because... At this point in time, he would be discovered flat out because let's face it, it would, <laughs> they would smell it. They would know that rotten meat is very distinct. And he would keep using that same excuse. Oh, my refrigerator is out and I'm going to have it fixed. It's just, oh my gosh. It, it, it's an, insane seeing that the father kind of encouraged that line of thinking. And the fact that the cops are just so blind to the fact and they don't want to be wrong even when they're called again like he's he's living in one of the worst neighborhoods which also add to the fact that the cops don't want to be around in that neighborhood they'd rather get out so everything kind of added to his protection where he lived even though he was surrounded by hundreds of people in his apartment complex the cops didn't care about things that went on there because it's a crack den they didn't care because because they find out he's homosexual they were disgusted. They find out that they're, it, it was, uh, well, when it comes to race, who cares if they went missing? It's just, it's just, oh my gosh. The fact that the stars lined up for him to get away with this so often when literally he w should have been caught after the first one is just insane. Um, I'm not a fan of how it's jumping through time so quickly. Like episode two went from six year old, six years to I don't know, I guess after the military, I wish they would have shown some bit of the military. And then, yeah, it, it, with him living with his grandmother and then him killing his first person. I'm assuming that's what it did because it just jumped way too quickly. I would have preferred, like, if you're going to go back in time, do a, a slow linear progression because I have a feeling that the next episode, they're going to do flashbacks as well. If they don't, fine. I just keep it where it's going. But... I was praising the first episode, but then it just goes straight back and just does an, or does an origin story. But yeah, it still it still had me in, intrigued in the fact that the father was genuinely because genuinely wanting to to get in touch base with his son. That's that's what really hurt the fact that he was genuinely wanting to get to know his son and find a common interest. I was thinking that it was going to be like a, an abusive father who basically did this to his son to make to t kind of torment his son. But no, no, he was actually genuinely trying to find oh, poor father, poor father. No wonder he was devastated. No wonder because he can now see the writing on the wall. Oh, no wonder he broke up into tears. It just 
he, he had a part in it. Oh, yeah, on to episode three. Thank you all for watching. Talk to you next time. Toodles.